I really like Monster Hunter. It's one of the deepest, most satisfying games I've ever played. It combines the tactile, deliberate combat of a Souls-like game with a really addictive crafting system for making flashy-looking weapons and armor, along with a social hub for showing off all that cool gear you make. The games have a lot more personality than the generic name Monster Hunter implies. The monsters themselves are colorful and weird and unique, uh, the world is full of all sorts of interesting details and character, and uh, you're accompanied everywhere you go by these little pun-making cats called palicos. If you've been curious about Monster Hunter, but you've been too intimidated to get started, Monster Hunter World might be your best access point. Uh, while Monster Hunter World is shaping up to be the most accessible entry in the series, you'll still need to get over a bit of a hump before you get to that really good stuff. The game doesn't always do a great job of explaining its many, many systems, but with this absolute beginner's guide, you should be hunting monsters in no time. Monster Hunter is a game built around a loop, and that loop is prep, hunt, kill and carve, craft, and repeat. Before we get into that loop, let's talk about weapon classes, because choosing which weapon you learn is maybe the most important decision you'll make early on. The differences between weapon classes go way beyond damage and attack speed and combos. Each weapon class has a unique set of mechanics. So switching between weapons in Monster Hunter is less like switching between assault rifles in Destiny, and more like switching between characters in a fighting game. For example, the Switch Axe is a big axe with a meter that fills, allowing it to transform into a slower but more damaging sword that does a lot of elemental damage. The Gun Lance is a heavy weapon that combines a sturdy defense with strategic ammo management. The Insect Glaive is a staff with acrobatic attacks and an insect companion that can be deployed to extract special stat bonuses from the bodies of monsters. Finding a weapon with a moveset and mechanics that appeal to you is important early on, so be sure to experiment. You'll begin Monster Hunter with the starter weapons for all 14 classes, and you can try them out in the training area. To get to the training area, just go to your room in Astera and talk to your housekeeper. For beginners, I would recommend starting with the longsword. Its combos are super simple, and the mechanics are really easy to wrap your head around. Normal attacks with your longsword will build up your spirit meter, which you can discharge in a special combo by mashing the R button. If you land the final move, your meter changes colors and you get a nice damage bonus. This bonus can be stacked up to three times. You can also spend a level of this bonus on a special thrusting attack. It's mapped to the right trigger and triangle or Y for Xbox users. No matter what weapon you choose, you'll have access to a helpful combo guide in your Hunter's Notes. Just hit start, go over to Hunter's Notes, and look at your weapon guide. By default, the game also includes prompts in the upper right corner of the screen to let you know what you can do next at any given point in a combo. While it takes some time and effort to learn a weapon class, it's by no means a permanent decision, so don't panic. You'll always have the option to pick up a new weapon if you want to try something new. Once you know what weapon you want to get started with, you're ready to get into that Monster Hunter loop of prep, hunt, kill, craft, and repeat. Let's take a closer look at that loop. First up is prepping for your hunt. The first step in Monster Hunter is to pick which monster you want to hunt. You can talk to your handler, or you can take a look at the quest boards. These are in the upper and lower parts of Astera, the hub city. There are a few different types of quests which we'll go over now. Assigned quests represent the sort of main storyline of Monster Hunter. These quests usually introduce new monsters and new mechanics, and they'll unlock new areas to explore. And these quests can't be repeated. Optional quests, however, can be repeated as often as you like. Typically, they'll task you with hunting a monster or combination of monsters within a certain time limit. There are also other types of quests such as slaying quests, which task you with eliminating a certain amount of smaller monsters, or gathering quests, where you'll go out and collect a certain type of resource from the environment. A lot of these optional quests will unlock new features in the hub world. For example, if you complete a gathering quest for your chef, it might unlock new meals in the canteen. Investigations are sort of disposable quests. They come with special conditions and bonus rewards. You'll earn new investigations as you play. But to get them to show up on your quest board, you'll need to go talk to the resource manager and pick which ones you want to tackle. You can do most of these quests a couple times before they're used up. Next, you want to decide what items you're going to bring with you. This can be done at any of the red chests scattered around the hub world or in your tent at any camp. The default loadout will be fine for the beginning of the game, so don't worry too much about it. Just make sure you've got potions, rations, and if you're fighting an enemy you know uses poison attacks, some antidotes. When you start fighting harder monsters, you'll want to start specializing your kit. You can even create custom item loadouts to instantly restock a specific set of items. While you're at your chest, you can also pick out your armor and weapons. 
You don't have too many choices at first, but in general, if you're going up against a monster that uses fire attack, try to use armor with good fire resistance. Monsters also have elemental weaknesses, so if you're going to fight a monster you know is weak against fire, and you have a fire weapon, bring it along. Once you've picked your quest and your armor, you always want to eat a meal. This can be done at the canteen in the upper level of Astera or at any camp in the game world. Most meals will increase your maximum stamina, as well as offer you other defensive or offensive bonuses or elemental resistances. Meals also offer special skills that have a chance of activating. Always, always, always eat before you go on a hunt. In Monster Hunter World, you can do all of this prep work in Astera or at any of the camps in the hunting regions. Once your prep work is all done, you can go on your quest by running through the gate or by opening your menu and departing on your quest. Okay, so now you're hunting, and the first step is always to check the blue chest for guild supplies. Monster Hunter provides you with some health potions, some stamina rations, and other items that might be useful on whatever particular hunt you're on. These items can only be used on this quest, so prioritize using them over your own items. Now it's time to find the monster. As you run around the map, you'll find traces of the monster that you can pick up with Circle or B. Your scout flies are these little green glowy things, and once you've picked up a few traces of the monster, they'll start guiding you to more. Eventually, they'll just point you directly to the monster. As you make your way around the map, feel free to use the Sprint button. If there are no monsters around, it won't drain your stamina. You can always check your map for a lay of the land. The map will also show you resources for gathering points that you've already found. As you hunt the monster, collect any resources you find along the way, especially herbs and honey. They can be used to create healing potions that will save your skin later. Once you catch up with the monster, it's time to fight. So let's go over basic combat. Fighting monsters is all about learning their attack patterns, getting close enough to do damage, and then getting back out. Pay close attention to the way the monster moves. If it's looking at you, as opposed to your palico helper or another hunter, it's probably coming after you next. The body language of the monster can tell you a lot about what it's planning to do next. When an Anjanath cocks its head and opens its jaws, it's about to drop this bulldozer attack, so get out of the way. When you see an opportunity to attack, jump in and throw some combos, but don't overcommit. Some attack animations have long wind downs, and you might get punished if you get too greedy. From time to time, your attacks might trip the monster. If this happens, it'll fall over and flail for a few seconds. This is a really good opportunity to use your slower, more damaging attacks, or to target a part of the monster that you can't normally reach. You'll notice that you have a little cat companion. These are palicos, and they do a small amount of damage to the monster and help to draw its attention away from you. They also have support items. By default, they'll provide you with healing vigor wasps. If you're just getting started in Monster Hunter, I'd recommend sticking with this extra healing. Last but not least, never be afraid to sheath your weapon for more mobility. If you're new to Monster Hunter, it takes a while to get used to. Moving around with your weapon drawn can be really slow, so if you're not actively attacking, it's usually a good idea to put it away so you can get around quicker. In Monster Hunter, evading is your best friend. Only a few weapons actually come with shields, so you'll want to get used to rolling out of the way of attacks. If you see a monster winding up for attack, try to dodge out of the way. You can even roll out of the wind down animations for some of your attacks, so if you just finished up a big combo and you're feeling a bit nervous, feel free to dodge out of it. While most attacks don't cost stamina, evading does, so make sure to keep an eye on your stamina bar. You do get a few frames of invulnerability during a dodge roll that will actually allow you to pass through a monster's attacks, but you shouldn't worry about that too much early on. Just focus on not being where the attack lands. If you evade towards a ledge, you'll jump, and then you'll have a chance to perform a mounting attack. If you successfully mount the monster, you'll ride it for a while. Tapping the attack button will chip away at the monster's health, and when the minimap glows orange, brace yourself with the right trigger. If you hold on for long enough, you'll knock the monster over, and get a chance to deal some big damage while it's down. You also have the chance of performing a powerful mounted special move. You are going to get hit, and it is okay. That's what potions are for. Some monsters can take you down in two to three hits, so if your health is below full, it might be time to slink away and drink a health potion. You'll need to sheath your weapon before you can heal yourself, or use any items for that matter, so try getting something between you and the monster before you start chugging a potion. You can still move and even sprint a little bit while you're drinking a health potion. I usually try to move perpendicular to the monster to avoid any incoming attacks as my health bar fills up. In the worst case scenario, you can evade out of a healing animation. You won't get the full benefit of the potion you're drinking, but you might avoid taking even more damage. If you get hit with a status effect, you might want to sheath your weapon and take care of that. Poison, which turns your health bar purple, will drain your health over time, so you'll need to take an antidote. Antidotes can be purchased in Astera or crafted from resources you find in the field. If you catch on fire, a few dodge rolls will fix you up. 
There are other stranger status effects that you can be afflicted with. Most of them can be cured by eating a null berry. Null berries can also be found in the environment. If you take too much damage, you'll faint and be carted back to the nearest camp. You'll lose any bonuses that you had from your pre-hunt meal. In most missions, you can be carted back to camp three times before it's game over. Another important meter to pay attention to is sharpness. When this meter is green, your blade is sharp. As you use your weapon, the sharpness will degrade. When your weapon drops down a level, it'll do less damage, and it might start bouncing off the monster. If the monster is running away or you have a moment of peace, check your sharpness. Your whetstone can be used to get your blade back to full sharpness. It has infinite uses, and you select it like any other item. Always be sharpening. After taking enough damage, the monster will usually turn tail and run to another section of the map. This is a great opportunity for you to take stock of your situation. Sharpen your blades, heal up if you're not at full health, and eat some rations if your maximum stamina has dropped. Eventually, the monster will retreat to its nest to recuperate. The monsters will fight hard before the end, but if you keep doing damage and dodging, you'll win. Congratulations on destroying nature. After you land the last blow, you'll have a minute to carve resources from its body. Most monsters give you two to three carves. You'll also get a nice helping of monster parts as a quest reward, so don't worry. Once you've got a bag full of monster parts, it's time to go crafting. Crafting can be done at the workshop in Astera. Armor can be forged by providing the smithy with the right combination of monster parts and a sum of money. Each piece of armor has its own stats and offers unique skills. You can view the skills provided by a piece of armor by hitting the menu button. You'll notice that each skill bonus has several levels. You can increase the effectiveness of each skill level, but you won't get the tools to do that until much, much later in the game, so don't worry about it for now. Weapons are also made at the workshop, but unlike armor, most of these can't just be forged. Rather, you'll need to create one of a few base weapons and modify them along an upgrade tree. Weapon upgrades also require specific monster parts. So you've prepped, you've hunted, you've killed, you've crafted, and now it's time to repeat. This is the meat of the Monster Hunter experience. As you advance through the quests and confront harder monsters, you'll need to start paying closer attention to your loadouts and items. If you're having difficulty with a particularly hard monster, you might even need to forge a set of armor specifically to resist its attacks. Facing powerful monsters and overcoming them with skill, planning, and teamwork is what makes Monster Hunter great. I hope this guide helps you get out there and start hunting. It's impossible to cover everything in just one video, so make sure to check out our guides page for more. If you're looking for detailed tutorials for the game's many weapon classes, there are a lot of great folks on YouTube who really know their stuff. I recommend RX or Gaijin Hunter. If you're a veteran hunter and you think I missed any really important tips for newbies, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Good luck and happy hunting!